We're going to move to the uh, the last talk in the session, which I understand is also live from Vienna. Uh, this is the traveling social golfer problem, the case for the Volleyball Nations League, uh, and it's going to it's presented by Rua Lambers. And I'm quite uh, intrigued how you combine golf and volleyball. Uh, so this is on. Yes. yes. I'm not. I don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'll adjust that. That was a bit much. Why are you sorry? <laughs> sorry for that question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me in my talk about. Uh, Fairness in the Volleyball Nations League, which is based on joint work with uh, Fritz Pixma and Lara Rothhuis, who are also both from Eindhoven University. Okay, the Volleyball Nations League, what is it? It's a volleyball tournament organized across the globe uh, between the best volleyball nations teams. So it's not a club competition, it's a team competition, but uh, uh, the nations uh, competition, hence the name. And uh, so when I say across the globe, I really mean across the globe, because this is the schedule for the South Korean women's team in 2018 or 2019, when they had to fly from Europe to East Asia, to the USA, to Europe, to East Asia again, all within five weeks. Uh, and I don't know uh, how frequent you fly, but you can imagine that this uh, might uh, get to you. And it might have gotten to the South Korean team as well as they finished second to last in the tournament. With, yeah, so they played this, their place was 15. And you can compare that, for instance, to the Polish uh, women's team. Uh, and they, they had, had only one trip from Europe to Asia, somewhere in the middle of the tournament. And they finished sixth. And if you compare that to other, uh, what the other results in other competitions that were uh, around the time, for instance, the uh, world championships, the Polish team, team didn't even manage to qualify for that, where South Korea did. So they really outperformed uh, their previous results, basically. And South Korea sort of underperformed, you could say. And the question here is, of course, did this travel scheme influence the performance of South Korea? Well, that would have been done then by a thing called travel fatigue. And uh, I have here a quote by Fenki de Jong that you can read if you like, uh, stating how fatigued he was traveling to a match they lost uh, against Turkey. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and this travel fatigue is a well known phenomenon that uh, is studied in all kinds of uh, sports and like rugby, baseball, basketball, etc. You can just Google it, uh, travel fatigue and the sport, and you will find a result on it basically. So yeah, it might have something to do with it. So if we want to design a football nation league schedule, we should make sure that the travel fatigue isn't a big factor for any team. So what else do we need to take into account when designing a football nation league? Well, there's, so for instance, there are 16 teams and they play for five weeks in a row. Uh, and in every week they play uh, in a pool of four. And in this pool, they play against every other team in the pool. So you play three, three, three matches per week, basically. And uh, in the end of the, at the end of the competition, you have played every team exactly once. And if you calculate that five times three, that's 15. There are 16 teams, so you indeed can play every team exactly once. And uh, so, and these pools, they are hosted by a venue. Every <coughs> pool has a venue, and these venues can be everywhere, basically, as we just saw with the South Korean team. Uh, and there's uh, only limited time to travel, because you have three match days, and then, well, you have to get your stuff, and uh, you have to travel from Argentina to Australia or whatever, and then, uh, yeah, then the next match begins almost. So uh, that's really something we need to take into account. Uh, and this, this will be the objective of our volleyball nation league schedule that we are trying to make. Uh, we want to minimize the difference in travel distance for the teams when they meet. So uh, if I have to travel very far and my opponent has to travel very far and we meet each other, 
then we'll both be fatigued. So there will be no advantage or disadvantage or not a big one per se. Uh, whereas if the difference in travel distance is very large, then there will be a big advantage or disadvantage for any of the teams. So this is the thing that we want to minimize on. So this, we don't want to minimize on the total travel distance for all the teams or whatever. We just want to make sure that when teams meet each other, they have, have both flown 10 hours. Okay. <laughs> and this is the approach that we're going to take. We're going to define, uh, yeah, we just defined uh, the problem. And now we're going to generalize it to a thing called, uh, uh, to a variant of this social goal problem, which some of you might know. And then we are going to decompose this problem actually in two different problems called venue assignment and nation assignment. Show that the only thing we need to care about actually is the venue assignment. And then uh, find sketches that are good. Okay, so the social goal problem, uh, for those of you who don't know, you know, uh, this is it. It's very related to the global uh, problem that we saw. You have golfers, N of them, they team up in groups of K for a certain amount of rounds. And we want to make sure that every golfer meets every other golfer once, or at most once, but we do once here because we do a round robin. <coughs> and well, this is a decision problem. So for a given set of golfers, groups, and rounds, can we actually find this, uh, this the schedule that satisfies this. And what we are trying to do is to optimize something. And that's because we have this traveling component in it. Uh, a thing to optimize, if you want to optimize something, there should actually be a solution to begin with, of course. So, uh, well, for the following initially, there is a solution because the competition exists. But uh, yeah, so we actually want to assume that the, uh, the social goal problem has a solution. So we are going to look at a certain type where uh, the number of teams is a square of the uh, yeah it's a square a square number and you know and the pool size is the root of the number of teams so there are k pools consisting of k teams in every round so the number of rounds will be k plus one <laughs> and if you have this assumption on your social goal problem then uh, for very uh, lots of values of k there will actually be a solution so that's good. And uh, so, and we have these pools, right, from the, uh, that we saw, and they have a venue, and this venue has a multiplicity. So how often can we use the venue? Because you don't want to do all the matches at Wembley, for instance, because that would benefit the English team. Uh, and uh, <coughs> this uh, multiplicity is known in advance, and all the multiplicities are such that they count. They sum up to the exact amount of venues that we need. And this is the, the, the objective that we're trying to minimize. It's uh, yeah, this formula, which just states basically in a mathematical form, what I said that the objective would be, namely minimizing the travel distance, difference in travel distance for the teams when they meet each other. Okay. Uh, and this, so we call this by the, we coined the term traveling social goal uh, with this, uh, Definition. And to give a small example of how it works, we have four, if suppose you have four teams and the uh, pool sizes are two, and there are four venues of which A and B need to be used twice, and the distance, this distances between the venues is one for most of them, except for A and B and B and C, then this could be a schedule. And then you see there on the right hand side that the total inference score would be four. Uh, but it doesn't really <coughs> illustrate that much. I also made a picture. Uh, can I point? Can I point it? Oh, yeah. Yes, it's okay. just online. They don't see it. see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have like in round one, we have teams one and two and three and four play against each other. And then in round two, we have team one meeting team three. And team one can stay at the venue so that he doesn't have to travel. And team three actually has to travel for a distance of two. So that's a difference of two. Well, the other two teams, when they meet each other, they both travel once, so that gives them fairness of zero. And this well, something similar is happening between round two and three. And uh, this gives a total fairness of four, as you might see. Okay. Uh, and so, and this traveling social goal problem, so we can, if we look back, can we cover it? Yeah. So then you see that there's like a difference in when teams meet. And in which venues they play. So we have a venue assignment. So in round one, we have 
venue A and B, and this, this. and we have a pool assignment, a nation's assignment to pools, but one or two are meeting in the first round, etc. So this actually consists of two parts. <coughs> and this, uh, we, 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 we have this theorem that we came up with, that it actually doesn't matter what the nation assignment is for the unfairness of the schedule. The only thing that matters is the venue assignment. So we only need to know in which rounds every venue is used. And it's not that difficult to see this actually, because uh, suppose that we, well, so we have this K, uh, K pools of, of K size, and every team can only meet once. So this is the red pool, and we have a green pool and a blue pool here in this case. And then in any other round, we cannot have two red teams meeting each other. So uh, there should be a red, a blue, and a green one in every pool, because we also need to have in total a total number of K pools. Uh, and this means that between the venues here, here, and here, and here, here, and here, there will be traveling from every venue to every other venue. So the total, of the, the, the fairness of the system only depends on the venues that we've chosen here and that we've chosen here, and not on how we distribute all the nations from one, one place of the world to another place in the world. Okay, so I hope that's clear to, to people who are watching. Uh, and uh, so now we have this, and it's a bit sad that this, this uh, venue assignment is still an MP hard program if you would uh, make it like bigger than N is four. Uh, and you can prove this by, for instance, a reduction from the Lomos Hamiltonian path. Uh, but I won't do that now. Because uh, we now we can look to the real uh, life instances of this problem. And uh, in real life, uh, we have uh, pools and venues, but every venue is also part of a country. And if a country has a venue, for instance, uh, Austria would host a match in uh, Vienna, then uh, the, 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 if the pool would be assigned to Vienna, then you, of course, want to have an Austrian team, the Austrian team there as well. <coughs> and uh, now we cannot so easily say, okay, but we're only looking at the venue assignment, and if you optimize for the venue assignment, then we have an optimal schedule uh, and we're done. Because we also need to make sure that every time a, a, a home venue is used, the corresponding home nation is actually scheduled to play in their thing. And uh, this is not per se uh, doable. So if we look again at the schedule with only four teams, and we have in the first round, we have uh, the home venues of team one and team two uh, being a uh, organizing pool, hosting pool. And in the second round, again, and then in the third round, we would have uh, team uh, three and team four uh, having a uh, hosting a pool. Then uh, there is no way to make a schedule for an information assignment that actually uh, has a match between team one and team two in this. Uh, given this venue assignment. Uh, whereas you can reshuffle the uh, venues uh, over the round such that there is a feasible schedule possible. So we need to make sure while making the venue assignment that there is a, a feasible nation assignment possible. And luckily, when N is 16 and K is four, and we have the assumption that every team has a home venue that will at least uh, organize host a pool at least once, uh, then it doesn't matter. Because <coughs> whatever we find from the venue assignment and whatever the other multiplicities are, so even if there's a team that hosts uh, five pools in five different weeks, if, uh, the nation that hosts five pools in five different, different weeks, then we can still, we can always find a schedule uh, of nations by uh, simply assigning in a smart way in the schedule the, the drive printed here, uh, the, uh, yeah, the nations, the, the, the numbers to corresponding nations, and then it will work out. So it's just a matter of case distinction. And if you work hard enough, then you will find solutions to everything. <coughs> so uh, now we've just, uh, we, we know that we can do whatever we want and will always turn out right. We optimize for all the known instances of the uh, volleyball nations leagues, which are only four because the last four have actually been canceled due to COVID or been organized in a different setting. Uh, so we have four real life instances. And this is, for instance, how it turned out. This would be the optimal fair schedule 
for uh, the men's 2018 tournament. And you see that in round three and four, all matches are organized in Europe. Whereas in the real, what, what happened in real life, for instance, was that they always had at least one pool uh, that was hosted in Europe, leading to a very high uh, amount of unfairness, because there would always be a team that could just travel within Europe, and there would always be a team that would travel from I know, Argentina or East Asia or something to Europe, so that would lead to high unfairness. And this is an overview of the unfairness of the, the optimal unfairness, and the unfairness in real life, and you see that a big difference. Uh, and we also, for comparison, because you know, for uh, climbing degrees and whatnot, you don't want that the optimal solution would be to just all fly to the moon and back all the time. <laughs> uh, that uh, we also show the total tra travel distance, and it's pretty relatable, I would say. I mean, even for this tournament, there's even less traveling than. Uh, they, they had in real, in real life. So it would clearly be beneficial without any costs on this side to, to just make a more fair schedule uh, and possible as well. Uh, and this was basically what we had to show as results. And then you can ask some more theoretical questions. Uh, so the, we have this objective function for which we can really nicely decompose the schedule into a venue assignment and a nation assignment. You can wonder if there's like a class of objective functions for which this decomposition also works. So for instance, if you want to do total travel distance, it still works to, do, to, to decompose it like this. Uh, and uh, you can also wonder for which, because now we have this, this idea of multiplicities where every nation has at least a home venue that gets used once, but maybe uh, you don't have that, or you have a different set of venues and venue constraints and then can we still do this decomposition and always find a good solution? And that was the end of the talk. And uh, if there are any questions, I will glad to answer them. <coughs> All right, thank you very much. Are there any questions? So I have I have one to start it out, and it comes back to the the actual optimization criteria that you use. So you made a point about how it's uh, trying to make sure that every team, every pair of teams when they meet have traveled the same distance. But I wonder if it's not possible to have a solution where you have one team, you know, traveling 10 times 10 hours and at every game, they actually meet one other team that has traveled 10 hours for that game. But those other teams travel zero hours, for example, for all the other games they meet. And so that would give you a zero uh, optimization, uh, optimal optimization criteria, but one team would have massively more cumulative travel than all the others. Uh, yeah, that's a very good uh, point. Yeah, because you, yeah, you can alter the objective function a bit by, for instance, uh, yeah, also make sure, making sure that whenever teams meet, they have traveled about the same time in total, just, I mean, over the entire tournament, yeah. Uh, or, or maybe make it a constraint that it shouldn't differ too much between the teams. And uh, I think that you, if you want to still use this, this decomposition idea, then it would, that wouldn't work that well, because you have to look at individual teams and then the individual routes of the teams matter more than it does. Right. Matter. Yeah, but it's a very good question. And, but so did you actually look at the solutions for the real tournaments that you produced and look at difference in cumulative travel between the teams? Was there a big difference? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, the second to final slide in the... Uh, oh, no, that sure was the total travel list. Um, yeah, the difference between a pair yeah. of teams in total oh, travel right. distance. Okay, so you, what you can do is you can optimize again when making the nation assignment over the, the venues as, as they are to, if, to, to try to minimize again over another objective, because whatever you do, your original unfairness objective won't uh, change. So you can find a nation assignment that's as good as you do, as, as, yeah, as you want it to be, basically. Uh, OK, thank you. There, there's a question in the chat from Frederick. What about time zone changes and travel fatigue? And so I guess the idea is traveling east to west is 
harder than yeah. probably north south. Yeah. And so yeah. is that taken so, into account? Yeah, like you can, yeah. So this is we just use as a manner of uh, how to peak you go like the total distance, but you can also use a different distance matrix. Uh, for instance, time zones or time zones only the right the way that's most jet laggy. I don't know which one to do this. Flying east or something. Uh, yeah, so you can also do that, and then you just get then it's all the same, but the distance matrix is, is different. Different, basically. Uh, all right. Thank you. Maybe time for one more question. All right. I'm not seeing anyone. Any? So let's thank uh, Roa again. And uh, this concludes the session. Uh,